we have a reaction of magnesium chloride with potassium carbonate. Uh, we have 0.54 molar magnesium chloride with 533 milliliters and excess amount of potassium carbonate. What we want to know is how much of the precipitate is formed, the mass of the precipitate. Well, first we have to complete the reaction. So it's a double displacement reaction. Magnesium combined with carbonate, potassium with chloride. So we have uh, magnesium is a plus two, carbonate's of minus two, so we have MgCO3 plus uh, potassium chloride. We have a plus one and a minus one. We ignore those subscripts at the moment until we write the compound. Plus one minus one means one of each. Now the subscripts show that we have a total of two of these. And we need the solubility rule, so we know that uh, compounds containing potassium are always soluble. So potassium chloride is aqueous. We know that most carbonates are insoluble, except for alkali ions, as in the potassium. So with magnesium, it will be a precipitate. Magnesium carbonate. Uh, we see that it's uh, is a precipitate in nature. It forms a rock called dolomite. So now we have the balance equation. We can calculate um, how much of the magnesium carbonate is formed. So we're going to start off uh, calculating moles of magnesium chloride by doing the concentration molarity times liters. So we convert milliliters into liters. 0.533 liters. This will give us the moles of magnesium chloride. So we need to do the stoichiometric ratio. It's a one-to-one -one ratio between magnesium carbonate and magnesium chloride. So that'll give us moles of magnesium carbonate. So we just need to multiply by the molar mass. Ninety-five point two one grams per mole. And that ends up giving us twenty-seven grams of the magnesium carbonate.